the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how the kuru princess paid their guru dakshina to their teacher drona by capturing king drupad for him we also learned how dhritarashtra was forced to declare yudhishthira as the crown prince of hastinapur One day, Dhritarashtra called upon Yudhishthir and said, My dear Yudhishthira, you and your brothers have been working too hard. You have been constantly fighting wars and hardly had any rest. I think you should take a vacation. Why don't you make a trip to the beautiful city of Varanavata? I hear that a great festival is underway in Varanavata. Kings and their representatives from all over the country are attending this festival. Why don't you and your brothers go to Varanavata and spend few days there as representatives of Hastinapur? You can take your mother Kunti with you. You will get your rest and you will also enjoy the festivities. Yudhishthir was surprised to hear of this proposal and he suspected that something must be wrong. but he knew that he won't be able to decline the offer either so he humbly accepted the proposal and said uncle your wish is our command we will soon leave for varanavata duryodhana was delighted to hear the news he never expected that his plan would get such a great start he called upon his trusted confidant purochana and instructed him go to varanavata right away and build a house for the pandavas but build it with highly flammable materials a house that would burn down to ashes in minutes when struck with a tiny spark but remember no one should suspect a thing when the house is built invite the pandavas to stay there and when they settle down duryodhana gestured with his hands the action of lighting a fire Evil Purochana right away knew what his master was asking for. He grinned and said, "Don't worry, Prince Duryodhana. I'll make sure your mission succeeds." Duryodhana said, "Please do, and I promise you, you will never have any dearth of wealth. Now go and start your work." Purochana hired few skilled artisans and rushed towards Varanavata. and in a short period of time they built a beautiful house made with highly flammable materials like wood sawdust lac and wax when the pandavas along with their mother kunti arrived in varanavata purochana welcomed them to their new house but the moment yudhishthir entered the house he knew he was stepping into a death trap the faint but indistinguishable odor of lac and wax told him that vidura's warning was not unfounded just before the pandavas were about to leave for varanavata vidur came to know of this conspiracy through his spies in the palace but it was too late for him to do anything but to warn yudhishthira as the pandavas were about to mount their chariots vidura spoke to yudhishthir in a foreign language which only the two of them knew He said one who knows the enemy's plans should work on ways to counter them remember there are more ways than one to kill one's enemy a fire can burn down a forest but can hardly harm those who lives underground like a mole they can escape through the fire through an underground tunnel one who can navigate reading the stars and knows his ways can not only protect himself but can also save the others do you understand yudhishthira said i understand on their way to varanavata yudhishthira looked very concerned and thoughtful kunti asked him 
What are you thinking of, my son? What did Vidur say to you? Yudhishthira said, Vidur warned us. There will be an attempt to murder us. Most likely, our house will be set on fire and we will be burned down with the house. He suggested that we plan for our escape. Inside the house, Yudhishthira explained the situation to his brothers. Bhima was quite upset. He asked, Why did you agree to live in this house when you knew perfectly well of this Duryodhana's plans? Let's go back to Hastinapur and demand an explanation from Duryodhana. Yudhishthira asked him to calm down. He said, We don't have any proof as yet. If we accuse them now, they would surely deny and blame us for suspecting them and causing ill feelings in the family. I suggest we play along and at the opportune moment, we'll burn down the house ourselves and escape. The same day, a man arrived and met Yudhishthira. He was an expert tunnel digger and was sent by Vidura to dig a tunnel out of the house. And soon, secretly, he dug a deep and long tunnel from inside one of the bedrooms leading out into the forest. At night, the Pandava brothers and Kunti would sleep in the tunnel while one of the brothers would stay awake on guard. During the day, the Pandavas would explore around the city of Varanavata and plan for an escape route. But Purochana was clever too. For almost a year, he showed no signs of antagonism towards the Pandavas. Rather, he was too kind to them and served them like a loyal servant to earn their trust. He stayed in one of the rooms and took care of all the household tasks. One day, Yudhishthira called his brothers and said, I think now is the time to make our move, else Purachana can strike any time. I have learned from Vidur that Duryodhana has already sent his signal. That evening, the Pandavas arranged for a grand feast. Sumptuous food and drinks were served to the guests. Purochana helped himself to quite a few pitchers of wine and soon fell asleep in his room. Little after midnight, when the entire city was in deep slumber, the Pandavas put the house on fire and slipped out through the tunnel under the house. The highly inflammable house, made of lac, wax and wood, burst into flames and within minutes, nothing was left but a huge pile of smouldering ashes. Purachana too was burnt alive in the house in his sleep. And along with Purachana died a group of five tribal men and their mother. The night before, they had come to attend the feast and after having a great meal and few bottles of wine, they lied down in a corner of the house and were fast asleep. Unfortunately, the fire killed them too. Next morning, when the people of Varanavata found the charred bodies of the five men and the woman, they figured those must be of the Pandavas. They all blamed their fate for this unfortunate accident. The news soon reached Hastinapur and a deep sorrow engulfed the city. Bhishma, Drona, Kripa couldn't believe their ears. How could such gallant warriors be killed in a petty fire? Dhritarashtra, Duryodhana and his brothers, they all openly lamented the loss of the Pandavas, but inside they were bursting with joy. They declared a month-long mourning and donated large amounts of wealth to the Brahmins and to the poor, who in turn praised the glory of the Kurus. In fact, since the departure of the Pandavas, Duryodhana has been trying his best to appease the citizens of Hastinapur. And now, the death of the Pandavas gave him the opportunity to win their sympathy. Only Vidur knew that the Pandavas were safe and sound. But he kept his mouth shut and patiently waited for the return. The Pandavas, along with their mother Kunti, came out of the tunnel into a dense forest outside the city. They followed the stars and ran towards the south. Kunti was getting tired. She was not accustomed to walk through the forests and that too at night. She often tripped and fell on the uneven ground. 
Bhima said, Mother, please let me carry you. She didn't even have the strength to object. Bhima lifted Kunti on his shoulders. He then said, Brothers, let me carry you too. Then we can move much faster. With his superhuman strength, Bhima lifted his four brothers on his two arms and the son of wind ran through the forest, bulldozing through the trees and boulders along the way to carve his path. Soon, they were miles away from the city. At dawn, they reached the banks of the Ganges River. They walked down the river bank to find a shallow spot to cross the river. Suddenly, they saw a large boat on the river and the boatman waving at them. The boatman introduced himself to Yudhishthira and said, Vidura has instructed me to wait for you and I have been waiting here for months. He asked me to take you down the river to any destination you want. He was speaking the same language that Vidura had used earlier with Yudhishthira. The Pandavas had no reason to distrust him. The boat took them down the river Ganges and dropped them off on the other side, next to a deep forest. Bhima once again picked up Kunti and his brothers and trampled through the forest. At dusk, Kunti asked him to stop. I am very thirsty, my son. Can you arrange for some water? Bhima gently put her down and said, Mother, wait here with my brothers. I'll get some water for you. Bhima wandered through the forest and found a lake. He fetched some water for his mother and brothers. But when he returned, they were fast asleep. He didn't wake them. Rather, he sat on a rock nearby and stayed awake to guard them. In that forest lived the ferocious Timon or Rakshasa, Hidimba, and his sister Hidimba. These Rakshasas or demons were ferocious and powerful beings. They hated humans and loved to eat their flesh. They also possessed various mystical powers. They could change their shape and form at will, and they had the power to fly and could perform many magic tricks. Hidimba was deep asleep, but the sweet smell of human flesh woke him up. He got up from his bed and ordered his sister, Hidimba, I smell human flesh. Some human beings must have come to our forest. Go and get them for me. Tonight, tonight we will have a grand feast. Hidimba was also interested in tasting human flesh after a long time. She followed the scent and soon found Bhima sitting next to his sleeping mother and the four brothers. But looking at the muscular and handsome Prince Bhima, Hidimba was struck by a thunderbolt and right away she fell in love with him. She felt if she could accept someone as her husband, it could only be Bhima. Hidimba magically took the form of a beautiful maiden, dressed herself in gorgeous clothes and jewellery and came in front of Bhima to seduce him. She asked, Who are you, my dear? And who are these men and women sleeping next to you? Bhima was quite surprised to see such a pretty woman in a deep forest like this and was quite suspicious. So, instead of answering her question, he asked, Who are you, woman? And what brings you here? Hidimba smiled coyly and said, I am Hidimba, sister of Hidimbo, the demon who rules this forest. He wants to devour you all and has sent me to fetch you. But I have fallen in love with you and would like to marry you. Come with me. I will take you far away from my brother and we can live happily ever after. Bhima was not at all impressed. He angrily said, You horrible demon, how dare you make such a proposal? I would never leave my mother and brothers here to be eaten by your rakshas brother. Hidimba said, I can save them too. Wake them up and I'll fly you all to safety. Bhima replied, I can't wake them up now. And let me tell you, I am not afraid of any demons or rakshasas. Go back and send your brother. I'll teach him a lesson he will never forget. 
but Hidimba didn't have to call her brother. Hidimba was hungry and couldn't wait any longer, so he followed the human scent and arrived in front of Bhima and Hidimba. When he saw Hidimba in human form and flirting with Bhima, he was furious. He growled at her and said, You bitch, I will kill you too, along with these humans. He then ran towards the Pandavas to attack them. Bhima stopped him and said, Hey, hey you coward, why do you blame your sister? Whatever she did was only because she is in love with me. And don't you dare awaken my mother and brothers. Come here and fight me if you dare. Bhima pulled Hidimba to one side so as not to disturb his mother and brothers and soon a fierce battle started. Hidimba pounced upon Bhima only to be tackled and thrashed on a large boulder. Hidimba cried out in pain but he didn't give up. He caught up and attacked Bhima again and this time Bhima picked him up and hurled him away and Hidimba crashed into a huge tree and broke it apart. The noise of the battle woke up Kunti and the brothers. Hirimba was standing next to Kunti. Kunti asked her, Who are you, girl? Hirimba introduced herself and said, Mother, I am in love with your son Bhima and would like to marry him. Would you please bless me and grant me my wish? In the meantime, Yudhishthira, Arjuna, Nakula and Sahadeva were all watching Bhima and Hirimba's battle. They were quite amused with the way Bhima was toying with this giant Rakshas. But it was getting late and the sun was about to rise. Arjuna called upon Bhima and said, Brother, please finish this game soon. The sun is about to rise and, and during this twilight period, these demons can multiply their power. Finish it. Bhima lifted Hidimba over his head, spun him around few times and then crashed him to the ground like a thunder. Hidimba's bones were shattered by this powerful blow. Bhima then struck his torso with a powerful kick and broke his spine to kill him. Bhima then came to Hidimba and said, You Rakshasas cannot be trusted. I must kill you too. Yudhishthira came forward and stopped him. Brother, he said, You shouldn't hurt a woman, let alone kill her. She hasn't done us any harm and she'll never be able to do so. Hirimba kneeled down in front of Kunti and said, Mother, Mother, I have abandoned my family for the sake of my love. I cannot go back now. If you refuse me, I'll have no other option but to die. Please, please accept me as your daughter-in-law. Please let me marry him and take him with me. I promise I will return him whenever you want me to. Kunti looked at Yudhishthira for his advice. Yudhishthira said, Hirimba, since you love my brother so much, we can permit you to marry him, but for one condition. After marriage, Bhima can spend the day with you, but he must come back to us every evening. Hirimba gladly accepted. Bhima then said, Wait, wait, I too have a condition. I'll marry you, but we'll stay with you only until you have a son. Hirimba agreed again. So, Bhima and Hidimba got married following the Gandharva tradition of exchanging garlands. After marriage, Hidimba flew them all to a nice place in the Himalayas and started their conjugal life as per the conditions. In due course of time, Hidimba gave birth to a son. The son, being a Rakshas, grew up to adulthood almost immediately. He was named Khatotkacha. Khatotkach was extremely powerful like his father Bhima and also had the magical powers like his mother Hidimba. Khatotkacha asked Kunti and the Pandavas, What can you do for you, grandma, uncles? Kunti smiled and said, Dear Khatotkacha, you are my eldest grandson and the first son of the Pandavas. Help us when we need you. Khatotkacha said, Call me whenever you need any help. I'll arrive in a moment's notice. Saying so, he and Hirimba flew off to the northern Himalayas. The Pandavas continued their journey. By this time, they had grown long beards and long hairs. They wore clothes made of tree bark and looked 
just like the Brahmin sages of the forest. One day, they met their grandfather, Vyasa. Vyasa advised them, they are not yet out of danger and they should stay in hiding for some more time. He took them to the village of Ekachakra to a Brahmin's house. There, the Pandavas lived as Brahmins in disguise and waited for further instructions from Vyasa. Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed, and told by Shudipta Bonik. Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.